Hello and welcome back to my channel. Happy March. Why did it take me so long to know what month it was? Today it is finally time to do my February reading wrap up. I am sorry this is a couple days late, but February ended a couple days early, in my opinion, so maybe this will help balance that all out. How was your February? I feel like February was if you've seen any, I think I've talked about February in every video I've made in February. It went too fast. I feel like I did not read very much. Um, and looking at this, I mean, there is a little stack. So I definitely read more than in my head I thought I did. But it was a weird reading month for me. It was a month where I had a really hard time finding time to read. Like every day I wanted to read and I just could not find the time because I've been so busy. If you've noticed, I've started posting a lot more here on YouTube um, and on my other channels about, you know, books, board games. Uh, junk journaling, just all kinds of stuff. And I have a lot of really fun projects I'm doing. And all of these things are really exciting, but it also means I don't have as much time to read, which is wild because reading is such an important part of who I am and part of my life. And so there's been many days this month where I just haven't had time to read. I've gotten to the end of the day. It'll be like 10 o'clock when I'm ready to sit down and read and I will read a page and I will realize I am so incredibly tired that I can't, I, I'm, I just put the book down and go to bed. <laughs> and that is, that is very rare for me. Usually I, you know, I, when I get to the end of the day and it's time for me to sit down and read, it's like one of the best, most relaxing parts of my day. Uh, and I just haven't had that, which also probably explains why I felt super stressed all of February because I was kind of missing my reading time. So I'm really working on in March, working on getting back to that and finding more time in my day to read um, and making time for it because I really wasn't making time for it in February because I was juggling too many things. And, and I'm still going to be juggling things in March, but I'm trying to juggle things more effectively and kind of figure out my priorities a little bit better. We'll see how that goes. Check back in with me at the end of the month to see how that goes. And if I'm crying on the floor, you know how it went. <laughs> Obviously, before we get into anything else, of course, make sure to like and subscribe. I'd like to see you back here more often. If this is your first time here, my name is Jason. The internet also knows me as Easy Cat. I post about books, board games, and other nonsense such as junk journaling or opening toys while whispering. It's a weird niche <laughs> I've carved out for myself on the internet. I don't know what I'm doing most of the time, but people seem to enjoy it, so I guess it can't all be bad. Down below, I will link my Discord in case you're interested in joining that. It is completely free to join. I will also link my Bindery community, Easy Cat Press, a place where I post exclusive content, and we are also publishing books together. How exciting is that? All right, that's enough of the whole YouTuber thing. Let's talk about the books I read in February. I'm just looking at this pile, and February was a weird month. The first one we're going to talk about <laughs> is that time I got drunk and saved a demon. This... <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I decided to read this book because of the cover. I think the cover is, like, stunning. I love the artwork. I mean, hello, look at this man, hello. Um, this, this was, okay, to my great surprise, this was quite an epic fantasy story. Um, we're going on an adventure, we're trying to kill an evil witch, we're trying to free an enslaved people. Like, this has all the trappings of, like, a really great fantasy story. And, on top of all of that, it's also so spicy! My goodness, there were tongues in places... And, and there were, and finger, there, uh, things were happening. People were doing the slippity smack, throwing it back quite often. Now, this is part of a series, and there are more books in the series, but what, my main complaint about this book, truthfully and honestly, is that it was just too short. Like, this has all the action and adventure and fantasy of a big epic fantasy book, but, but it's so short. I think it's like, what, like 200 pages, maybe? Oh, 259 pages. That is not enough time for all the things this book was trying to do. And because of that, the book often does feel super rushed. Like, I feel like we were running, like jogging from one place to another. And the only time we stopped, the only time we took a break is when we were doing a little, when we were doing a little something in the, in the woods. You know what I mean? Um, and I needed more time. I need more time with the world. I need more time with the fantasy elements. I need more time for all the epic adventure, adventure stuff because there was so much of it and it was so good. And this world was immediately captivating. And just the way that this world is set up, I, I wanted, I wanted more of it. And instead I got, you know, when, when they make a fantasy series, like they take like a, like a 10 book long fantasy series and they try to make it all in, into one movie. And the movie just feels like constant rushing from one place to another and you never have time to really like sit down and like settle into the world and the characters this book kind of felt like that and there just wasn't enough time there wasn't enough time i ever i wanted more i wanted more of everything and and it was just so fast and furious so i mean i'm excited to try and read the other two books that are out from this specific series i think they deal with different characters, though I could be wrong about that. I'm not exactly sure because I just want to see more of this world. But I, I guess that's a compliment. It's a compliment and a complaint, right? Like the complaint is 
this book is just over way too soon uh, to really like get into. Like, I mean, th listen, think, there are certain things that we get real deep into in this book, okay? Real deep. But there are other things like the lore and the world and the characters that I just didn't get enough of, and I want more. And I feel like hopefully we'll get more of that in the in the future books. I don't know if that's the case or not. Um, I find, uh, and this is gonna be true of another book I'm gonna talk about that was also a spicy book. I read two spicy books that mo this month. Are aren't you so proud of me? Something else. Something I find about these books is they'll sometimes have one book that's about certain like two characters, and then the next book will be about two other characters in the same world and like maybe these characters will show up for like a little cameo but truthfully i just i just needed more i mean we are on an epic quest imagine if the entire lord of the Rings series was condensed down to 250 pages and in that time we also had to make time for frodo and sam doing the hippity hoppity bippity bobbity in the woods like that there's just wouldn't be enough time right <laughs> I want to read that book, by the way. If anybody has written that specific book that I, even if it's on, even if it's fan fiction, I'll read it. You just, you, you just, you know, you, to, to have my people, have your people call my people. I'll read it. <laughs> I don't have people. It's literally just me. Listen, I don't have a team. I don't have an agent. It's literally just me in a room with a giant stuffed stitch. Okay. That's all we have here. <laughs> A whole disaster. Anyway, I liked this book quite a bit. I just wish it was longer, and I wish there was more time to get into all the really deep and fascinating lore of this world. Um, that time I got drunk and saved a demon. It was cute. It was fun. It was adventurous. It was much more fantasy heavy than I expected, and that was a good thing. But it also was a bad thing because it made me want more of that, and I, I only hope that future books will give me that. I don't know. I don't know. Also, let's just give it... This is a stunning cover. I, I mean, these books have been out for a while, and I hadn't really thought to pick them up, but the second I saw this cover and this went on sale, I was like, oh, yep, I will read that. Um, so, I mean, I know we're not supposed to judge books by covers, but we do judge books by covers, and this one did a great job of getting me to pick this book up, so kudos to the person who did this. All right, let's shift gears for a second. Um, this month for Easy Cats Book Club, we read Dawn by Octavia Butler. Now, this was my first ever Octavia Butler book. I was very excited because I have heard nothing but good things about Octavia Butler. I have heard bad things about Octavia Butler, but they're from people... Uh, on the internet that I don't respect. So that to me is still an endorsement. <laughs> so I was really excited to read this. Wow, this book was so weird. <laughs> it was so weird. Uh, it it kind it's essentially about this woman who wakes up like on a spaceship with these like creepy like tentacly aliens and they're like humanity is is dead and we've brought all the humans here so that we can basically teach you how to repopulate the earth and once you do that we're going to take you to earth and then you can repopulate the earth oh but wait oh but wait also you have to sort of kind of mate with each other and with us in order for us to repopulate our our people it, <laughs> it was this is like oh gosh it was i mean it's like ice planet barbarians if ice planet barbarians was like a truly serious sci-fi novel and not like a, a spicy book. Somebody, some people in the comments are going to be angry I said that, but it it has that kind of like, kind of weird, warped, alien people vibe um, where every chapter something new would happen and I'd be like, ugh, ugh. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, the writing is phenomenal, okay? The, the sci-fi elements and the critique on humanity is phenomenal. It has this kind of like Lord of the Flies aspect where you see people slowly being brought back to life and basically being told, here you are, we're going to help you repopulate the earth. And literally humans cannot get along with each other long enough to even do that. They're distrustful and they're violent. And it really like encapsulates humanity and why humanity got to the point where they've gotten to in this book, which is almost completely obliterated by themselves, and why there's maybe not hope for them in the future. This is a trilogy. Um, the first book does end in a way that it could very well be like the end, um, but it is a trilogy. I will say the first book kind of ends and it sort of feels like we didn't accomplish anything because where the first book ends, it sort of feels like, oh, we didn't get anywhere. <laughs> We didn't get it. We, we really didn't get anywhere in this book. Um, we did. Like, there is progress that is made for the main character and for her story. But but ultimately, we kind of are... Wh whatever happens in book two, we're kind of starting back from ground zero, um, which is interesting. 
but it also makes the book kind of work as a standalone, which I'm, if you've been here before, you've heard me talking about, like, when it comes to trilogies, I need, at least the first book has to work as a standalone. I hate when first books don't have an ending, when they don't have a third act, because they just end at the end of the second act, and it's like, okay, we'll pick up book two in three years to find out what happens next. That drives me nuts. The first book in a trilogy, truthfully, all three books in a trilogy, but, but most of all, the first book in a trilogy has to work as a standalone. It just has to. And this does, but with the caveat that it is somewhat of a cliffhanger ending. But it could easily still work as, as a standalone. Um, it's, it's hard to explain without spoiling anything. This was a weird book, man. I... <laughs> I I was completely captivated by it. I I found the um the the look and the insight it had on humanity to be so interesting. I found the sci-fi part of it to be so warped and twisted, but it's like you couldn't look away either because you just you were like one one hand over your eye like what are they doing? What are they do Oh, they're doing what I thought they were going to do. Um <laughs> but uh, it definitely made me want to read more of Octavia Butler's work. I was just like blown away by the the concepts of this story, the writing of this story, the characters of the story. It was so bizarre, but in the best way. All that being said, I don't know if I liked this. <laughs> I thought it was excellent, okay? You know how sometimes you know something is, like, really, really good, but you don't necessarily, like, the experience of it is not one you walk right away from being like, wow, that was great! <laughs> That's how I felt with Dawn. When I finished Dawn, I was like, that was an excellent book. I need to go take a shower. <laughs> uh, because there's so much in here that's just like, bleh, like, makes you have, like, like, shiver down your spine. Uh, but that being said... It was really, really good. Um, I Would I recommend it? Sure. If you like really weird sci-fi uh, that will make you kind of just itchy all over. <laughs> Is that your vibe? Imagine walking into a bookstore and then being like, what, what are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for a sci-fi book that will make me itchy all over. When I finish reading it, I want to feel like I need to wash every inch of myself. What, do you, what would you recommend? And I would say, ah, madame or sir... Uh, or whoever you are, might I recommend Dawn by Octavia Butler? This book was wild. Excellent, excellent read, wild, made me so uncomfortable. I gave it five stars if that helps. <laughs> what, what, what was, what was going on in February? How did I choose my reads this month? Because, <laughs> so far... Oh my god. Okay, this is Butcher and Blackbird. If you follow me on TikTok or Instagram, or even on YouTube, you've seen me talk about this already. I thought this was great. This is like, this is like if Emily Henry wrote a book about serial killers. I, okay, so the concept, first of all, this takes place in modern day. That was very surprising to me. I, for some reason, looking at this cover, I think because I had like Sweeney Todd in my head, I was sure that this book took place in, in like the early 1900s or 1800s I don't know in my head this was this was not a book that took place in current day and then in the first chapter the main character like picks up a cell phone and I was like what <laughs> where'd you get that cell phone from did Doctor Who visit you and then I realized it took place in modern day so this is very like Dexter ish it's about two serial killers who meet in like a dungeon and and how you know they're both like wow you're hot and so but of course they can't tell each other they're hot because you, as you know, when it comes to romance stories, you can never tell the other person what you're thinking because then you might actually be able to have like a normal functioning relationship with them. And, and who wants that, right? So they decide, instead of just telling each other they want to spend more time with each other, they come up with this game that once a year they'll meet and they'll have a target and they have to try and go after this target. And by the way, much like Dexter, they go after bad people. So they're like bad people that go after bad people. And so they'll have a target, and then whoever gets to that target first and, like, takes them out is the winner of that year's contest. And this is, like, their excuse to hang out every year, right? Like, it's it's like their, it's, it's like their Comic-Con. Like, oh, we get together once a year at Comic-Con, except for them, it's, like, killing bad guys. And if you haven't heard about this book, the trigger warnings, the content warnings are ridiculous. I mean, there's, like, questionable use of a mummified corpse. There's other things. I don't really know what I'm allowed to say on, on YouTube, so I'm going to leave that for you to discover on your own. I made a short about it, and I used some of those words in the short, and nobody got angry about that. There's, there's moments of people eating other people. Sometimes on purpose, and sometimes accidentally. Both, both, both things happen in this book. It's a, it's the whole, it's the whole thing. You get every part of that. But yeah, the book is kind of like a romantic comedy, just, but, but with all of that.
And I mean, that's fun. I went into this book. I mean, I think after you read the content warnings, I was very nervous. I was like, is this book going to make me like feel ill? How, how in intense is this going to be? Truthfully, personally, now obviously that, that line is going to be different for everybody, but personally, it didn't really, it didn't have any sort of effect on me. It, it wasn't so graphic that I was like, Ugh. um, it was more like a chuckle, like, <laughs> yeah, that's gross. You know what I mean? Um, and it also wasn't like, the, the grand breadth of the book was not these, like, disgusting situations. They were, like, few and far between. Because, ultimately, this is also a story about people. It's also a love story. And they, these people have normal lives outside of the serial killing they're doing. I probably should be saying unaliving. I don't know what words I'm allowed to say. I don't know. Maybe three people... Maybe maybe this video won't be seen by a lot of people because YouTube will be like, no. And, and that's the risk we run when we talk about books like Butcher and Blackbird. Uh, to me, if this got made into a movie, I would want it to be a musical. I don't know why. I just... I got musical vibes. I, I, there were multiple points in this book where I was like, this should be sung. They should be singing this part. I just think this would be make such a good musical. It would be like Sweeney Todd vibes. Um, the Heathers. Like, it would be like right in there. It would be so good. Um... Little Shop of Horrors, like, there is a precedent for making a musical out of something like this, and I think it would be great. <laughs> there is a sequel to this coming out, and again, it is going to take, it is going to be about two of the side characters in this, are going to be the main characters in that. I will read it, absolutely. I just thought this was fun. I mean, it's gross and ridiculous, but it's fun. The spice is, woo, that was the part that was a lot for me, the spice. There was so much, the spice in this book, I was, I'm sure I was blushing. I read this on a plane, on an airplane, and I, when I tell you, I was like, folding the pages to make sure the person next to me couldn't see what I, what I was reading. I was like, don't, no, don't look over here. Just focus on your movie that you're watching, sir, please. Because there was that part. The spice is like the most graphic part of the book. Like it is, it is spicy with a capital S and a capital P, okay? And a capital I. Every letter in spicy is capitalized in this situation. But I really liked this. This, this is definitely something that like lived up to the hype. Uh, if you'll notice, you'll notice that for me to really like a spicy book, I have to, it has to have a good story. Like there are some people who, when they read a spicy book, they could not care less about the story. They just wanted to have a good spice. And listen, respect. That's your, if that's your jam, if that's your vibe, go for it. But for me, I needed to have a good story. I need, I need the book to work. Even if there were, if, if you were to take all the spice out, would the book still work? That is, that is really important to me when I'm reading a spicy book. This book and That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon both have that factor where if you took the spice out, the books would still work completely well and would still be great stories. This was a lot of fun. I don't, I only recommend it if you heard everything that I just talked about and you're like, yes, that sounds like fun. It's it's definitely a wild book, but it was a good time. I enjoyed it. This is so bizarre, but we're going to jump from all of that to a middle grade book. <laughs> Listen, no one can accuse me of not reading diversely, okay? Because we have gone on a journey today. Uh, so anyway, this is The Lost Library. This is one of my favorite books I read this month, actually. This is a middle grade story, and this is about a town where a library burned down, and now they don't have a library. And we follow three characters, okay? So we follow a young man who is, like, going to school, and he is sort of trying to figure out what happened to this library, uh, because he goes to a... Uh, he, there's, one day he finds a little free library has been built, and he pulls some books out of that, and he finds that they all belong to that, they originally belonged to that library that burnt down, and they all were returned on the same exact day, which just happens to be the day the library burned down. What? Okay, so that's character number one. Character number two is a cat uh, who used to live in that library and now is protecting the little free library. Okay, it's his little free library. And character number three is a ghost who lives in the like historical society house of the town who used to work in the library when it burned down. And also she helped put together the little free library. What? So you get this like really interesting like mystery story surrounding the town, surrounding this library, surrounding the ghost, surrounding this kid and how he connects to it, surrounding this cat. Uh, and yes, it is middle grade, but you know, sometimes I talk about middle grade books that anybody could read and enjoy no matter what age you are. And this is absolutely one of them. This is a book that is great for anybody. And especially if you like cozy stories, if you like cozy books, um, cozy like paranormal books, or even cozy mysteries, this definitely falls into that category. This is, this is a middle grade book that transcends age, like any age could read this. Now, yes, one of the characters is like a middle grade student. And so it does have some of those like kitty-isms to it. But even that, I mean, between that and the cat and the 
and the ghost, the girl ghost character. There's just so much here that's good. And it's really short. Like I read this book in an afternoon, cover to cover, and it was just like the best day. So I told you in February, I was having a really hard time finding time to read. And one day I just like put, a, put aside all my other priorities and just sat down and took like three hours to read through this book. And it was like probably my favorite day of February. Like it just made me so happy to just sit there uninterrupted and read for the whole day. And this was the book I read. And my goodness, what a delight it was. It was so good. Um, as you see the mystery unfold, it's just really excellent. It really brings to light like the importance of libraries, the importance of books, the importance uh, and, and the way that libraries form community, the way that libraries form a safe place for some people. It just captured all of that. It, it captured the magic of reading. It captured the joy of reading. It captured what makes people love books and why falling in love with books is such an important part of some people, uh, some people's identity. I, I just, ah, oh, it was so good. I can't recommend it enough. The Lost Library. Uh, this was just so, so good, and and definitely one of the highlights of my February for sure. Uh, now, I'm only going to show one book of this, but I actually read the entire series of this. They're very short books. These are also middle grade books. This is the Dragons in a Bag series. Uh, I, Full disclosure, I read this series because I was sponsored by Random House Kids to read this series and talk about it on my social channels. Oftentimes, I don't really talk about the books that I do sponsor content on um, on these reading wrap-ups, but I thought this was really fantastic, and I read through the whole series, and I really enjoyed all five books, so I thought it was worth mentioning. Um... These follow a young man who is basically like dropped off by his mom at this lady's house. They refer to her as Ma. He thinks he, that she's his grandma. It turns out she's not um, because the mom is trying to basically like make it so that they can keep living in their apartment because they're about to be evicted. And so she's like, I need to go deal with court. I'm going to leave you here with your grandma, who's not actually his grandma. And while he's there, he finds out that his grandma is like part of this whole like fantasy world where she can like dip in and out between this like parallel dimension where there's all these fantasy creatures and she's like taking care of dragons and she's a witch and so then he sort of becomes her like apprentice and we get further and further into this world it introduces some of his friends uh, and we're dealing with dragons we're dealing with witches we're dealing with other magical creatures and we're dealing with some people who want to keep that magical world locked away from our world and some people who want to like open up the doors let that magic into our world uh, it's really good it's got a really diverse cast of characters Characters. I also really like there's there's this specific thing in this book about the the relationship between very young like kids and between like senior citizens between like their elders right and I don't know about you but growing up I had a really close relationship with my grandmother and this just really reminded me of that I think there's a lot of us that have that right we're like mom or dad, whoever like our parents are, are like, you know, they kind of have to be like bad cop a little bit, but then our grandparents spoil us and we, you know, form this like very like close relationship with our grandparents. I know it's not happen, doesn't happen to everybody. I know that. Um, but it does happen to, I think a lot of people. And this book captures that where that aspect where, you know, he's having a really tough time communicating with his mom. And so he kind of like falls into this relationship with this woman who is sort of like a grandmotherly figure. Like she's not necessarily grandma, but she's like a grandmotherly figure and forms a bond with her and a relationship with her because his mom is kind of trying to protect him from all the bad things that are happening and trying to like, no, everything's going to be okay. It's all going to be okay. Right. Whereas his grandma is like very blunt and like very straightforward and very transparent and, you know, for this child that he really like connects to that. Like he wants, he, he wants to be treated like an adult. He wants to be treated, or at least he wants to be treated with maturity. Like he is someone who can understand these things that are happening in his life. Uh, and amidst all of that, we have this really cool, like parallel dimension, like fantasy story. It, it takes place, you know, grand chunk, the story takes place in like modern day, you know, in the city. And so it has this like urban fantasy vibe to it. I don't know. It just, there's so many things that were good about this and they're very quick reads. And I think they, you know, they're middle grade. So you can absolutely read them with a young reader. You could read them to them. You could read them on your own. I think because this book deals with like a lot of very like young characters and also their relationship with adults. To me, this series is best enjoyed as something read between like parents or grandparents and their kids. I think this would be a great like read before bed kind of situation or like read together like you read and I'll read the same book and then we can discuss it like a little at home book club thing. I'm like imagining such I don't even have kids. I'm imagining these situations. For me, I do it with my stuffed animals, right? So I like I make stitch 
read all of these and then we have a discuss we have like an end of the month discussion there are uh essay questions it's a whole thing but there are five books in the series and they were really just really 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 good uh i felt really lucky that i got to help promote these because i just i after i read them like when i took on the job to promote them i read the synopsis i read a little bit about each book i read some reviews and then i was like yes and but it's for me i always want to try and read at least some of, if not all, of a book that I'm going to be talking about in that regard. And I ended up reading all of it, all five books, because I just thought they were so good. Uh, and they were just fast reads. Like these were ones that I could just read really quick, pick up the next one, read really quick. Um, and I think they'd be a great read for a young reader. I think adults will probably really enjoy them too. But I think the best way for these, for you to enjoy these is as like an adult and a young reader, like reading in tandem, I think could be a really special experience. These were excellent dragons in a bag. Okay, next up is <laughs> Infinity Alchemist. <sighs> First of all, I love this cover, and there is like a little inside the cover sort of situation. Love that. This is this is this is a hard one for me. I I still don't feel like I know what my feelings on this book are. I I just I can't figure it out. This book kind of has like Full Metal Alchemist vibes. We follow a trans main character who is um, basically has abilities as an alchemist, but can't really use them in public because it's illegal because the alchemy the alchemist portion of this world is like really controlled by the state. And if you don't have a license, you can't practice. And if you do practice without a license, you are in big, big, big trouble. Um, and so we're following this character, but then we're also following other characters. There's one character who can like swap between genders. So it has kind of like a, like a non-binary vibe. Like one day they're, um, they are, they identify as female. One day they identify as male and they kind of go back and forth. And so that's really interesting. And then there's also a third character and there is this, this book, I will say this book is delightfully queer. So we have a trans main character. We have that queer, that, that character that is like gender queer. We have another character who I guess we could say is bi. Um, though I don't think it's ever like specifically said by or pan I, one of those uh, most definitely though I, I don't believe it's ever specifically said but I could be wrong about that um, and then we actually end up having like a poly relationship with us which I thought was really cool because not a lot of books have that um, and so I liked all of that and I liked all of the characters and I liked the world that was put into place I think my biggest issue with this book is the pacing the pacing of the story is is really is really hard. There are times where it's like great, especially early in the book. I loved the first like 50 pages. I was like, I am in, I'm in. And I really liked the last like 50 pages, but the middle, there are parts of this book that just like, I, if the, I, I've talked about this before, but some books when they feel like they're really long, even though they're not, this, this book had that feeling for me. Like there were portions of this book in the middle that just felt so long. Like I was like, please just get on with it. I, I guess the other thing that plays into that is that for a book about alchemy, I actually feel like there's a surprising, surprisingly little use of alchemy. Like most of the book is about these characters and their drama and them being dramatic with each other and just all of that. I like that to a point, but also like this is, you know, what we, what people love about young adult books is pace. Young adult books have a way of telling really grand epic stories at like a really great pace, especially when compared to adult books. That's why so many adults read young adult books, in my opinion, is that they, they really enjoy the fast, almost visceral pace of young adult books that a lot of adult fantasy doesn't have. A lot of adult fantasy is much more slow and methodical. And I love that too, but I also love that in the young adult space, we have really fast, you know, get right into the action type stories and this book was is not that like this is a book that's a very like slow plod towards the end and it, it just has like a lot of pacing issues i liked the book I, I think that's important to say here i did like the book but it is it is definitely an imperfect book like there is so much that i like about it and like i said the characters and the just overall queerness of this book is is really the the reason i loved this book so much and watching these characters kind of sort out their feelings for each other and kind of, you know, fall in love with one another and f have feelings for each other and deal with their relationships. I liked all of that, but I needed, I needed more of the world and the fantasy element to kind of back that up. And it, it kind of didn't. And there were a lot of moments where characters, the characters would do things, not necessarily because it made any sense for the character to do that, but more because that is what they needed to do in order to move the story along. Right. And I, I could feel it. I could feel like, why is this character doing that? Why are they making that choice? Oh, because we need them to be in this spot for this next thing to happen. 
That's why. But it wasn't, it didn't come from a place of like, this character has a great reason to do this thing. And I felt that kind of often in this book, that there were just characters doing things that didn't necessarily make sense, except that in order for the story to work, they had to do that thing. And that's always a little troubling, right? It's like, that's not why that, like characters, like good stories have characters with motivations that make sense. And that is what guides them forward. And that's why we buy into their stories. But when characters are making like really awkward decisions, that don't make sense for their character simply to progress the story and a story that is progressing at like the slowest pace imaginable. I found that really challenging. I think there are people that are going to absolutely love this book because there was, like I said, there is, I, there's a lot more that I liked about this book than I didn't like about this book. I, I think overall, this is a net positive. And I believe that there is going to be a next book in this series. I believe this is the start of a duology, if I recall. And I will most definitely read the next book if there is a next book, because I want to see what happens next to these characters and I want to see how they grow. But there are a lot of, there for every like two steps, for every two steps forward in this book, there's one step back, uh, both from an aspect of just crafting a great story and also just from an aspect of like plot. Like every time they make a little bit of progress, Progress, something happens that kind of like sets them back and you just kind of want to see them like get somewhere <laughs> at some point and that becomes really hard and what's crazy about that is that the end the ending of this book feels so rushed which is wild to me because there's parts in the middle of this book where we go pages and pages and pages and pages and pages without anything happening so for the ending to feel rushed it feels like what happened <laughs> How do we how do we get here? Uh, and so there's that. I had very mixed feelings about this book. Overall, I like I said, I think there are people that are just gonna eat this up and love it. And I I think there's a good reason. I think there's a lot here to like. But I also just wish the pacing and the actual story structure had been a little bit smoother because it could have been it could have been one of the greats. And as it is, I think it's a little bit more kind of in the middle, like a six or seven out of ten kind of vibe for this book. But Overall, I still had a good time reading it. All right, we're going to talk about one more novel, actually my favorite book that I read this year, and then I'm going to show you two manga that I read been that I picked up and started reading this month, just to give you a little bit of that. But my favorite book that I read this month, by far, was Welcome to the Hunam Dong Bookshop. Um, this is a Korean book that was recently translated. Uh, I loved this with my whole soul. I love this so much. And I often talk about how sometimes, sometimes we find a book at the wrong time, right? We pick up a book that's, an, it's an amazing book, but for whatever reason, it's just not the right time for us to read it, which is why I think, you know, DNFing books, like not finishing books you're not enjoying is, is perfectly fine because you might come back to that book someday and you might love it. I've multiple times read books that the first time I read it, couldn't get into it. It was not my thing. And then years later came back and was like, wow, this book is incredible. Why didn't I love it the first time? This book came to me at the right time moment. Uh, I I would say I needed this book. So, so this book is about a young woman who after she goes through some pretty bad experiences, she ends up opening a bookstore. She has no idea what she's doing. She doesn't know how to run a business, but she wants to open a bookstore. She loves books and she loves reading and she wants to open a bookstore. And so we kind of watch her like bumble her way through <laughs> owning a business and owning a bookstore. And she hires someone to help make the coffee, like a barista. And she sort of starts to figure out, oh, well, I want to do, you know, book talks. I want to have, um, not like book talk, but like book talks, book discussions. I want to have authors come in and talk about their books. And in the meantime of this whole book, we're talking about like what makes a good book, what makes a good book shop, what makes a good book suggestion for someone who comes into the bookshop. How do we pick reads for people that we've never met before? How do we recommend those things? What makes people want to come into a bookstore? What makes a bookstore inviting? And the book discusses all of that. But also, it discusses the way that, and this is the part that I really connected with, that after something bad happens, some people out there, and I'm one of them, will just pour them, rather than deal with the issue, they will pour themselves into a project as a way of healing. And at some point, they've poured so much of themselves into their project that they've forgotten to live. In February, I found that I was... I had so many projects kind of converge on themselves that I was over, I was so overwhelmed, so overwhelmed that I could barely breathe. Uh, I remember there were a couple days in a row, just like a week and a half ago that I worked like 16 to 17 hours a day, each day for like a week. 
because I just had so much to do and I just could not for the life of me catch up. I'm still not caught up, by the way. Um, I just couldn't get through all the work I needed to do and yet people still expected things from me. And, you know, friends would reach out and be like, hey, I'd love to see you. Do you have, like, you want to go to dinner? Do you want to go to the mall? And I just couldn't. I could I was like, no, I'm, I'm too busy. I'm too busy. To the point where, like, every single person that was reaching out to me was like, you're always busy. You're always busy. And to, people were asking, were like, asking me if I was okay. Like, do you, do you need a break? Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Hello? And I was like, no, 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 I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And then I read this book and it really discussed that, like pouring yourself so much into work and overworking yourself and forgetting to actually live your life. And that was like really eye opening to me. It was almost like this book came to me as like an intervention. And the day after I finished this book, um, the, the new video game, final, the new Final Fantasy VII game came out and I sat down to play it. It was the first time I sat down to play a video game in weeks, and I started crying. I know this is crazy that I'm sharing this with all of you, but just go with it. I'm feeling, I'm feeling like being open and honest. I started, and not like sobbing, but like I had tears in my eyes. And because I realized I was doing something that was not work, that was just something purely for myself uh, for the first time in weeks, and it was a really powerful moment. And it made this book even that more special because it kind of, it was like this book kind of woke me up to like, hey, you need to do things for yourself. You need to experience the world. You need to do things that bring you joy. Otherwise, all the work, pouring yourself into your projects and your work and the things that you want to do, that is important, but it loses importance if it's all you're doing, right? Like the point of pouring yourself into work and like going after your dreams is so that you can live your best life. And if you're not living your best life, what's even the point? And this book dealt with all of that as well as just like a cozy book about making a bookshop happen. I really loved it. I highly recommend it. It's probably one of, if not my favorite book I've read so far this year. I know we're early in the year, but I would I would be shocked if this didn't end up on my top five of 2024. I just, it blew me away. I loved it so much. And it was just absolutely excellent. Uh, I think it's a book that I will probably reread again later in the year because I want to do like an annotation of it and like highlight and tab and all those fun things because there's so many good quotable lines in this book. Man, I'm like getting emotional just talking about it. I love this book. And I, I, if you like stories about little bookshops and cozy little, cozy little stories about cozy little bookshops that actually are about more than cozy little bookshops and are about life and happiness and joy and finding yourself, then I cannot recommend this enough. It was so, so good. Oh my goodness, so many emotions. Let me show you a couple manga that I've been reading this month. So I recently picked up Cherry Magic. This is a BL story. It is... <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. I listen, I love it. Whoa. Before before you get angry in my comics, I, I'm like really into this. And I uh think I have purchased every single volume that is out so far, and I'm almost through all of them. This is a story about a young man who, after he reaches the age of 30, it's well, it's a story about like this concept that after you reach the age of 30, you develop superpowers if you have not um been in an, in an intimate adult relationship with somebody. Um, you develop superpowers so that you can read people's minds. So he is able to read minds and he ends up reading the mind of this very attractive man and finds out this very attractive man has a huge crush on him and awkwardness ensues. I think the book is very cute. I, I will say one thing I don't love about it is I do think manga has this tendency to have this kind of weird trope where you have like, especially in the BL world, you have like a straight character who isn't gay or doesn't think about being gay until they find out that a gay person has feelings for them. And then all of a sudden they start considering to be gay. This book does that. And I've read that in a lot of different manga and I don't love it because I feel like it kind of perpetuates this stereotype or this harmful stereotype that like gay people can turn people gay. To me, it kind of, it borders that line. Okay. So I don't love that aspect of it. But I do think the two of them are super cute. And I choose to think that the main character was probably gay all along, but he just didn't realize it until he, this hot man, he found out this hot man liked him. And he's like, you know what? I like hot men. Uh, so, I mean, it, it was hard for me to get into it first because of that kind of, I have that stigma in my head that I've read so many stories like that where like a character is not into guys until a guy is into them. And then suddenly they're into guys. I don't know. That kind of drives me crazy a little bit. But all of that aside, once you kind of get past that initial moment, Watching their relationship grow, watching them learn to like each other, watching them learn to communicate with each other. It's really cute. It's, it's, listen, it's not like, it's not the most brilliant story I've ever read. It's not like the most brilliant manga I've ever read. It doesn't do anything particularly new or special in the manga space, but it's a really cute little rom-com story and I'm having a lot of fun reading it. So there you go. The other one I started reading, and I am really liking this, is Shangri-La Frontier. I picked this up because I've been seeing advertisements for the anime and I like to read 
the manga before I watch the anime. This is um, a story about, it's kind of got Sword Art Online vibes. So it's about this young man who he likes to play terrible video games. So his whole vibe is he likes to play video games that are awful and they're like VR games right so this takes place in like the the slight future where we have like fully immersive virtual reality games so he plays like the worst of the worst games that are hard not because the game is hard but because the game has so many bugs and so many issues that it's more difficult because of that and he is obsessed with these games so finally he decides to pick up Shangri-La Frontier which is a new video game that is like triple a really good excellent game doesn't have all those bugs it's like a really well made big budget game and because he's so used to playing bad games he ends up being really good at this game and able to deal with the higher difficulty aspects of this game because he's basically been training himself to deal with all of those in the really bad games. And so you see him kind of like enter this world and start to find hidden secrets within it because he is approaching this game the way he approaches like the worst video games ever made. Uh, but he's approaching this like big budget game with that same mentality of like, the game is broken, so I'm going to, I just have to be more broken than the game almost. But I really like stuff like this. It kind of has a lit RPG aspect to it where we see him level up, we see him gain new skills, we see him gain new abilities, we see him go on quests, um, you know, make friends within the game, find like secret items, you know, open up things. And there's also this like bigger story involved that almost alludes, I'm very early in the story, but it kind of alludes to like the game developers like put something into the game that was like really, really, really hard that a lot of players have just decided is impossible. Like, oh, we can't beat those world bosses. They're too difficult. They're meant, they're not meant to be defeated, but he doesn't know that. So he is going after them with the, with the full consciousness of like, I'm going to beat that thing. You kind of see a glimpse of the people who make the game, like the game designers are, are almost like looking for people who are willing to take on the challenge. So it almost has this like little bit of like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory aspect to it, except in like, a virtual reality game, which I guess is kind of like Ready Player One-ish as well. But I don't know, I really like stuff like this. I like stories, you know, like Ready Player One, where we watch a character kind of like, and the genre is called Lit RPG, where you watch a character in a video game, kind of level up, earn stats, earn abilities, learn skills, things like that. I like that genre anyway, and that this is that in manga form. It is, if you've read Sword Art Online, it does not have that aspect where they can like cannot escape the game. Like they can leave the game and go on about their lives. Uh, which makes it a lighter story as well. Like, Sword Art Online is such a dark story. This is a lighter story. It does have moments of darkness when he's, like, fighting these, like, really, really scary monster things. But it also is, like, a lighter... It's not, like, a life or death. Like, if I die in the game, I'm going to die in real life. It doesn't have that aspect to it. And I kind of... I like that. I feel like Sword Art Online is, like, so melodramatic... I enjoyed Sword Art Online when I got into it many years ago, but I like this more because it's more of a fun story. Oh, and this is one of my favorite parts. One of my favorite parts is there's this girl who knows him in real life who sees him at the video game store and she has like a huge crush on him and she just happens to play Shangri-La Frontier and she is like, she kind of convinces the video game store owner to like get the main character to buy this game because she wants to meet him in the game because she has a crush on him and she plays this like, like one of the most famous high-leveled strongest characters in the game and like full like this is her this is her in the game like full shield armor everything and she wants to meet him in the game because she thinks that if she can talk to him and befriend him in the game that maybe eventually she'll be able to have a relationship with him in real life it's just like the cutest little thing amidst this like crazy epic fantasy video game story and i really love it i love that little like rom-com-esque element of this like bigger story it's very cute and it's very fun it's just like such a it's such a, like, lighter thing within a story that feels more, like, you know, dark and fantasy and swords and fighting. And then there's just, like, this girl in armor who has a crush on a boy. I love that. It's so cute. Um, but anyway, I'm on volume three of this, and I'm really liking it so far. Uh, and I can't wait to read more of it. That is everything that I read in February. Like I said, it was a weird month. I read some things that were very spicy. I read some things that were very weird. I read some things that really touched me on an emotional level. Um, I read things for adults. I read YA. I read middle grade. All kinds of fun things. And listen, I love that my reading is so all over the place. I think that's what makes reading fun is just to read stories from all different places and backgrounds and genres and age groups and ethnicities and everything. I just think it makes reading so fun. Uh, so have you read any of the books that I or manga that I talked about today? Did you read anything in, in February that you thought was just excellent? Do you have anything planned for 
for March that you're going to read that, you, that you're really excited for? Let me know all of that. I'm so curious. Like I said at the start of the video, make sure to like and subscribe. I would love to see you back here for more of my reading wrap-ups, for more of my board game playthroughs, for more of my junk journals. Whatever wild thing I decide to do on this page, I would love to see you back here for it. So make sure to, you know, find a way to come back. Make, make that easier for yourself. Thank you so much for hanging out and talking about books with me today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week, a wonderful rest of your March, and as always, happy reading.